There are two ways to add storage space to your computer. Replace your hard drive with a larger capacity one, or by installing additional hard drives. This video shows you how to do both for computers using parallel ATA drives. For this video especially, it's a good idea to watch all the way through before beginning to get an idea of the requirements and situations you may encounter. There will likely be some variance in the setup of your computer. Though the steps are the same, you'll want to familiarize yourself with the location of your devices and plan out the best way to achieve the end result ahead of time. You'll need a Phillips head screwdriver, a hard drive, and your computer to get the job done. Be sure your computer is unplugged entirely before opening it to avoid the risk of electrical shock or damage to your components. Start by opening your computer's case. For tower cases, this is most commonly done by removing the left side panel. Most computers will have thumb screws like this one or regular screws holding the side panel on. Consult your owner's manual for details on how to open the case if it isn't clear how to do it. It is always a good idea to touch the metal case or power supply to discharge any static before handling any of your computer's internal components. Once you've opened the case, you'll want to inspect the contents and get an idea of where things are. If need be, remove any venting ducts so as to get a better look at where everything is. Find the hard drive that's currently installed and remove all the cables that are attached to it and anything else that's in the way. You may want to label the wires with a piece of tape so you know what connects to what when you reassemble. Be careful when handling a hard drive. They're very sensitive to shock and dropping or jarring one, even from a small height, can potentially damage it. If you're simply replacing your original drive, remove the drive from the case. Look at the diagram on the new drive and set the jumper so the drive is configured as a master. Place the new drive in the case and skip forward about two minutes to where we show reattaching the cables. If you're adding a second drive to the system, you may need to reorder the position of the existing hard drive so that we can place the new one beneath it. You'll see why in a moment when we reattach the cables. Before we do any rearranging, you want to plan out which drive is going to be the master and which is the slave. The master is generally the drive you boot off of and have your operating system on. If you're just trying to add storage space to your computer and don't wish to reinstall or modify the existing setup of your computer, then you'll want to leave the existing drive as the master. Chances are it's already set up this way, but check the jumper pins next to where the cable attaches and verify the diagram on the drive indicates that it is indeed set as master. If not, move the jumper on the drive to the position that makes it the master. Do the same for the drive you wish to be the slave or secondary drive. Refer to the diagram on the drive for how to configure the jumper to slave. If you want to reinstall your operating system, but want to leave the data on your original drive intact, consider making the new drive the master and your original drive the slave. Installing an OS is beyond the scope of this view so you'll need to follow the instructions that came with your drive and operating system for how to format and install. Place the drives back in the housing and reattach the cables to any peripherals like this floppy drive that shares the housing. Inspect your ribbon cable. It may not be labeled like this one, and the connector colors may be different, but the connector on the end goes to the master drive, and the one in the middle goes to the slave. If the cable doesn't reach, you'll need to move the drives closer together. Hard drives have a tendency to create a lot of heat, especially those with faster rotational speeds, like 7200 RPM and up. If possible, try to position the drives far enough apart so the cables reach, but so air can flow between them as much as possible. Consider purchasing a hard drive fan or positioning the drives in the case near a fan to keep them as cool as possible and extend their lifespan. Once all the cables are reattached, double check that you didn't miss anything. Don't forget to attach the power cables too. Reseat any ventilation ducts you may have needed to remove and close the case back up. Once everything is properly closed up, reattach all the wires to the back of the computer and boot it up. 
As you're booting up, you should check the BIOS to see if the drive shows up on the peripherals list. You can usually get into the BIOS by hitting the delete or the F1 key as soon as you boot the computer. Your BIOS may look different, so search around for the primary and slave drive info. If you see a descriptor of your drive's models, that's a good sign that everything is connected and working right. There's a chance you may need to tell your BIOS to detect changes or to auto-detect the drives. See your computer's manual for instructions on how to do this. Save and exit the BIOS. Depending on how the drive you install is factory configured, you may need to partition and or format it. See the instructions that came with it or the instructions that came with your operating system for specifics on how to do this.